After all, I don't understand the wisdom how members of parliament were taken out of the council chambers. After all, some lacunas can lead us to a situation where we could have no general election for eight years. That's not a joke. Yes. We could have no election for eight or nine years. Those lacunas sit in the constitution. So those who designed or signed of that constitution... Watch the entire video, my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. So we urge our traditional leaders, civil society, the church, our partners, we call them our partners, to collaborate with government agencies and local communities to help sensitize our people to desist from bush burning. Too much bush burning, Madam Speaker. A harmful vice that threatens the ecosystems and exacerbates effects of climate change. Going forward, government will ensure that the livelihoods of our people and the environment are taken as a package and are protected fairly equally. Even as we endeavor to develop a country, even as we want to irrigate, even as we want to water harvest, we will take account of sustainability. Minister of the Green Economy, lead us in this way. Human rights and good governance. The rule of law, rule of law. Madam Speaker, the rule of law, the rule of law. Respect for human rights and constitutionalism are at the call of our government. We are committed to upholding and protecting these principles in totality, yeah. not from one angle, yeah. but in totality. Yeah. The new dawn UPND administration therefore continues to will continue to uphold the rule of law. No matter, no matter what is being said out there, we will continue to uphold the rule of law without segregation. The rule of law must be deepened. Our democratic credentials must continue to be deepened, but within the rule of law. And the rights and obligations of citizens is essential, but every right ends somewhere, but someone else's right begins there. So their rights, obligations, and responsibilities is part of the totality of the rule of law, yeah. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, citizens must continue to enjoy their basic rights. But every right, as I said, comes with obligation and responsibility, especially social media, especially social media. Madam Speaker, the Constitution remains an important document for our identity as a people. Let me just reinforce the issue of rights and obligations. We have seen social media is being used to damage countries. People are hiding behind a cell phone, a smartphone, to commit crimes. This government will take all criminality as crimes. Whether it's on uh, social media, whether it's behind a laptop, or a platform, you break the law, you're on your own. You have seen countries that have been put on frames because of falsehoods. Falsehoods are a crime. Yes. Yes. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, the Constitution remains important, an important document 
to our country's identity as a people. The country has, however, failed. Madam Speaker, I'm, I'm here to say the country has failed to reach consensus on this very important national document over many years, over many years. As a country, therefore, we still need to reform our constitutional order to ensure that it's truly reflecting the aspirations of our citizens. The new dawn UPND government, given the substantial work that has already been done in the past, yeah. and we don't want to repeat that expensive and time-consuming work, this government is committed to facilitate a least cost, efficient, and credible process yeah, yeah. to address lacunas, omissions, or oversights, so to say, in our constitution. So we are looking at this house under your leadership, Madam Speaker, to be supportive of a process that will be least cost, that will be time conscious, that will not lead to allowances and more allowances and sittings and sittings that will not do. Absolutely not. But consensus building, and this house is the one that should help us, and we'll be happy to go. After all, some of your constituencies are too big. After all, I don't understand the wisdom how members of parliament were taken out of the council chambers. After all, some lacunas can lead us to a situation where we could have no general election for eight years. That's not a joke. Yes. We could have no election for eight or nine years. Those lacunas sit in the constitution. So those who designed or signed of that constitution, I'm not sure what they were intending to do. So, Madam Speaker, you and us and the judiciary, executive, legislature, and judiciary, we are one government. We should work together. This is not a partisan issue. This is a national issue. I urge, Mr. Speaker, that we work as a team. I'm a team believer myself. Thank you. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, we are determined to eradicate all forms of corruption. We are determined to eradicate all forms of corruption. We remain firmly committed to zero tolerance policy against this vice. All suspected cases, all forms of corruption will not be tolerated. Past, present, future, all forms. And there's nothing to hide behind ethnicity, to hide behind religion, to hide behind political party in the fight against corruption. None of that stuff will be tolerated. There is no ethnicity, there is no religion, there is no political affiliation in the fight against corruption. Madam Speaker, I wish to indicate that asset recovery is part of the integral process of fighting corruption. It is an integral part of the fight against corruption. And Madam Speaker, in the last few months only, in the last few months only, your government has recovered over 100 million kwacha cash. I beg your pardon. 100 million kwacha more than, phenomenally more than, 100 million kwacha worth of property. 56.6 million kwacha cash. US dollar 30.8 million. Cash. Cash. These have been forfeited to the state and we are restoring value to the true owners, the citizens of Zambia. The figures are there. The figures are there. 
should you wish to know, Madam Chair, from one individual we recovered over $25 million. One individual. So this house must be united. This house must be united on the fight against corruption. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.